a friend since his first term as governor of Lagos State when I was a banker. And I have not seen him since the elections. I wanted to give him time to settle down. Um, so the first reason was to come and congratulate him formally. But also I wear many caps. Uh, I wear the cap of an economist. So I came to thank him for the steps he has taken to put this economy on course. As you know, many of the issues that we have been talking about uh, the subsidy that has caused a hemorrhage on the fiscus, the multiple exchange rate regimes, and so on. Uh, these are issues that I have personally been talking about for a long time. And I'm happy that on his very first day, he has addressed these issues and the markets are happy. And it is important uh, when the government does the right thing for us to give them feedback. It's not always uh, when they do a wrong thing that you complain. So he has started on such a strong footing as far as the economy is concerned that we have to come and support and encourage uh, that we continue along that path and be advocates for the policies he has pursued. Uh, the second cap aware is that of the Horejo Tabita Pulaku and I'm therefore concerned about the issue of uh, herdsmen farmer clashes and he's also concerned and we discussed um, steps that will need to be taken to begin to look at some of those issues. Thanks for joining us in Front Row Politics. I am Gimba Omar, and you've just listened to the former CBN governor and former uh, Kano, uh, the uh, former Emmy of Kano, Al Haji Sanusi, Labido Sanusi, very optimistic he is there when he met with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, when the president just uh, became president, winning uh, in the 2023 presidential elections. But joining us to further look at this uh, expectations is the uh, former NHIS. Uh, Secretary General, um, Executive Secretary, my, oh, my apologies, he is a hematologist, an oncologist, and a bone marrow uh, professor, bone marrow transplant professor. Professor, I want to thank you so much indeed for joining us on Front Row Politics here on Control TV at this time. Right. Uh, Gimba, thank you. You just, me. you just heard what uh, His Highness Sanusi Lamido Sanusi said at the advent of this administration with so much hopes. What are your views now? Did he speak a little too early? Uh, probably yes. I mean, uh, the 14th Emir of Kano, as you all know, is a highly respected economist. Uh, not only that, we know his, uh, his exploits as the governor of the Central Bank, the Apex Bank. But above all, we... uh, we've been a friend since his first term as governor of Lagos State when I was a banker. And I have not seen him since the elections. I wanted to give him time to settle down. Um, so the first reason was to come and congratulate him formally. But also I wear many caps. Uh, I wear the cap of an economist. So I came to thank him for the steps he has taken to put this economy. Millions of Nigerians were very hopeful. But what is the story now? The story now is different. What the Emir of Kano, the 14th Emir of Kano said were the expectations and the hopes. And he was hopeful that the policies the president took then uh, were going to bear fruit. But it not down the road. We need a post-mortem. It would be nice to hear what the 14th Emir of Kano would say. But I haven't said that. I will tell you what still stands very, very deeply in my mind and my psyche about the 14th Amir of Khan. I remember there was a clip when he was on the throne. He was addressing uh, a gathering and the Amir was shedding tears. This were real tears. What was he saying? He was saying in his palace, there was a lady that came with her baby. He went to the hospital, got a prescription, and she came to the Emir for help. 
And as they all do, if you go to many of these palaces, you will see ordinary people walking in and asking for help. The time he was telling, narrating a story that this woman was waiting her turn to meet the Amir. And as she was waiting, he had a scream of this woman. And then he asked what was the matter. And they told him the story. The story was that this woman went to the hospital with her baby. And they gave her a prescription, came to the Amir for help. But before she could reach the Amir, her baby passed away back. The Amir was crying. That what she was looking for at that time was no more than 2,000 naira. This baby passed away. She put the baby back on her back, wrapped him up, and walked away. I want the Amy and every Nigerian to think this was three, four years ago. Now, there are millions of those women, children. That for little is between life and death. So, His Royal Highness, right? Millions more have been added into this bracket of extreme poverty, courtesy of President Bola Ahmed Tegu. So, what happened then? His Royal Highness, much worse now. That's why we are raising our voices. Millions of people. The dominant women and children, they go to bed hungry and wake up with no certainty of anything to, to eat. We in the hospital, we have seen lately since Mr. President came to power, spike in the number of children admitted to diseases of malnutrition. Your, your network your network is seems to be a little shaky um professor yeah but yeah, but yeah. If, if, so if, if, is, if i may butt in if i may butt in uh my apologies uh but but first of all I, I need you to tilt your 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 device a little yes that's it that's it beautiful okay now yeah. you will also agree that the president is not just sitting a kimbo there are massive reforms that are on the way especially within your sector the health sector to try to address those issues. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, he was speaking with the um, the Minister for Health to try to see that better health, primary health care delivery systems are better. Does that not give you some sense of uh, soccer that this government is, you know, on the right track to addressing the so many issues that you yourself have said it not once, not twice, but time and again, that the previous administration of the APC actually plunged this country this deep into the gutters. Right. And uh, to be honest with you, I haven't seen anything. What we have seen is this government, the same APC government, plunging us deeper into poverty. Health care is less accessible today than before. Health sector for God knows how long. I am a doctor today, 40 years and counting. What have they been doing? Now the emergency in health cannot afford basic medication. Basic. There are many are dying because they cannot afford it. We are talking basic medication for malaria. So you can build a million and one primary health care, the contractors will get their money, and the chief executive will get his cut, health care will go nowhere. Let's be honest with ourselves. We're old enough to stop, to, to start to tease truth from fiction. So, Mr. President, building stuff is not the way to go. And Jaffa, the last time I read, in the last year, 
42,000 nurses left the shores of Nigeria. And thousands of Nigerians have left, the physicians have left, healthcare workers, many hospitals, even in big cities, go to the national hospital, you go to our teaching hospital, the doctors that are left there are working overtime, they are working the work of five, six doctors. This is in the big city. In the, in the hinterland, the story is, is disaster. It takes years, over a de decade to train a consultant. They are leaving. It takes years to train a nurse. But if the priority of government is not held, people will move elsewhere. So we have a serious problem, human resource problem in healthcare, and we have drug supply problems, and we have affordability problems in Nigeria healthcare. So you can build as many hospitals as, as you want, which is what politicians want to do and cut tape. But we know this is not healthcare. We have been to Cuba. They don't Prof, have the Professor, I, I believe, my apologies again for putting it. I believe that you have got the, uh, the pedigree and the capacity to get to speak to some of those uh, uh, top politicians in office. Have you made any efforts to go there, tell them that, look, men, we are not getting these policies right. Your policies are whack and your policies need to be re-established. Have you had that opportunity or have you made that effort to go to them and tell them that this is what we should be doing as a people? Gimba, you know better than I that they listen to nobody. They don't listen. They probably will listen to your program. They will listen to Arise channels and all that and say, these guys are just ranting and go back to their lives as if it is 1999. They will stay away from home until election time. They know the truth. To be reminded, they know the truth. There is no person, even the richest person in Africa, that are poor. We go back home, we see how poor it is. The richest person in Africa comes from Kano. You go to Kano, what do you see? Sea of poverty all over. So we don't need to be told that our people are suffering. And the government, if they are serious, they know. They know. They just want to, don't want to hear. There is this thing, is they are deaf, dumb, and they are blind. They don't want to see. They are disconnected from realities of our people. And that is why we are raising our voices, telling them, there is horizon, there is trouble in the land because people are hungry. You don't play with hunger. Hunger has a national security implication that the government and its national security team must wake up to address. A hungry man is a very angry man. No country in the world plays with hunger. It looks like Nigerian governments are playing with hunger. This is where we are. So we have issues with hunger, we have issues with healthcare services. What do people, people have to prioritize. Do I prioritize between eating or going to the hospital? Prof, to the uh, hospital? This is one thing that we know, and this is very likely going to happen any time now, that uh, the NLC on to go on a strike, a demonstration, uh, they call it, uh, and the reference point for that demonstration has to do with... To the ordinary uh, citizen, uh, the labor bodies, they are just, they just threaten, will go on strike and nothing happens. This is different from the labor unions that we know when we were growing up. They were taken more seriously than this one. Remember, Nelsi President was beaten up, was it in Emo? Nothing came of it. Nothing came of it. Workers are now earning 30,000. A bag of rice, 50 kilo rice is 70 kilos, uh, 70,000. When APC government came into power in 2015, it was 7,000. It has gone up 10 times. And there is nothing this government is doing currently that will bring this thing down. Why? Because there are policies, two, two major policies, policies that are killing this country are the, the sudden removal of fuel subsidy. And there's 
a devaluation, massive devaluation of our currency. There is no nation, no matter how strong we can withstand this sudden removal of subsidy, of fuel subsidy, sudden removal, uh, devaluation of its currency, worsening of, of, of unemployment, hunger, anger, and, and discontent in the land. So, can we reverse it? Go ahead. Is this, re is this reversible? Can we reverse what uh, the APC has done? Right, right. Okay, so economists will tell you what should the government do? Should the government abandon this project altogether? Number one, should the government go full throttle and say everybody, they don't care? No. Should the government look at its policy and see how it can change stuff the way to go? Every policy you make, you have to revisit it and see how it is impacting on the people. But it looks like this government, what they are doing, to be honest with you, they do not give me any hope or any assurance they know what they are doing. They are as lost as the next person down the street. They are not as, as, as advertised. They are the gurus of economy. They've come, look at the way we are today. They made the dollar. To but you, you do realize that you're talking about uh, men with pedigree, to start with, Mr. President. To start with, uh, to, to go with next will be the... Uh, the CBN governor, Mr. Cardoso, as well as the minister of the economy, Mr. Eboom. So these are men that have been tested and trusted. Uh, should it we no, be giving they, them some more time? No, they haven't. They haven't been tested. They are on the big stage. None of them has but been. But these the are the same people who made Lagos State during right. the tenure of Bola Tinubu as the governor of Lagos State. And you know what Good. he has turned Lagos State Good. into. Shouldn't we give much. them a benefit of a doubt, say perhaps if there is a timeline to give to the fixing of this country, we could get Nigeria back on track, Nigeria back uh, to, you know, uh, a non-parallel market, dollar market uh, in, in place in Nigeria, say in the next two, three years. Good. Will that make so, sense to you? No, it doesn't. So, Gimba, this is the propaganda they came with. I built Lagos, I built Lagos, I built Lagos. Lagos is not Nigeria. Lagos is small. You can say it is the whatever economy of the world. No, Nigeria is a big arena. Local in Lagos. Now they are in the big stage, they are freezing. So don't come and tell me we built Lagos. I know Lagos, I'm 63. Some of them are not even born there. So, whatever you did in Lagos, stay in Lagos. You are elected now to come to the big arena and fix Nigeria. And so far in eight months, you're not doing well. What you've done in eight months, you have inflicted more pain than any human being. I'm old enough to have seen 14 administrations in this country from that of General Yakubu Goan to currently President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. We've never been in this much pain. I've never seen this much hunger in this country. I've never seen this much despair. So don't come to me and tell me you're Lagos, 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 Lagos. No, we don't want to hear that. All you do is annoy us. Your Lagos bunch are not doing the right job. They are not doing the right thing. So don't Lagos us. Whatever happened in Lagos, stayed in Lagos. You are not in the big arena and you're failing. So be humble enough to ask for help. That your policy okay. is hurting that's, us. That's what the president has done. That's what Mr. President just did. As a matter of fact, he met with the state governors, all of them, to try to see how to resolve the issues of uh, insecurity, number one, to try to resolve the issue of a, a battered economy, number two. When all governors come together and defy party lines, do you not think, Prof, that uh, this is the right thing to do at a time like this? Keep away politics, let's try to solve Nigeria, Let's try to make this country better for our children and our children's children. Low, let's get uh, a single uh, dollar rate. Let's get um, uh, commodities in the markets. Let's all get them down. Right. Gimba, they, you are talking like them. They are what we call armchair theoretical economists that have no connection with the realities of our people. I'm a physician. He's just like a doctor walking into a patient's room. 
and all you're doing is looking at the numbers. Blood pressure is this problem. Oh, tell me what the sodium is. You're not looking at the patient. You are not looking at the patient. You first of all walk into a room, a patient's room. You introduce yourself to the patient, talk to him, talk the, to the patient and tell him why you are there. And then you, you listen. But Mr. President, when he came, did not talk to anybody. Did not do anything. Flippantly on the day he was inaugurated, without consulting, without looking at the financial status of this country, flippantly just removed subsidy. And I'm old enough to know the truth. The truth is that this prescription is from the World Bank. And it's not working. I give you a prescription as a doctor. If it's killing you, it's no good. If it's not doing you well, you come back to the doctor. So this World Bank prescription has done nothing but kill our people. Uh, uh, Gimba, let me tell you a story. The other day, uh, I was in, in the market in, 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 in Kaduna. And I was standing there. A 14, 15-year-old kid came and asked to be given, Gary, two cups two cups of pig milk and I asked him who, who, who sent you he said his mother sent him what who is this for he said four or five of them in the house where is your dad dad has run away and left this is the story of millions of families in this country they cannot feed so you can sit in Abuja or Lagos and talk all the theory your theory does nothing. All it's doing is killing our people. So the Lagos team, you better, you better dilute it and get us real people that have a pulse on how people are suffering. All these your numbers are theory if people are suffering. People are suffering. That's what we are telling Mr. President. If this hunger has no politics, hunger has no ethnicity, hunger has no, no religion. What you did in Lagos then is then. Good for you. This is Nigeria, a bigger state. You're looking after 200 million people. Talk to us. You're not doing the right thing. Quit urbanizing the economy. All MBAs, ministries, departments, and agencies have been handed over to one ethnic group out of the over Prof, 200. Prof, ethnic group. if I may step in. Go ahead. You know, when, when, you, when, when, you, when you speak about uh, the government in that light, it's it uh, seems to suggest that um, uh, perhaps you are just being frustrated or too angry to accept that there are efforts that are being made to improve on what Nigeria has been. If you remember, uh, Charles Soludo, who was also one time CBN governor, now governor of a number of states, he came out to say that uh, what the Tinubu administration inherited was a dead horse. He just didn't know it at that time. To wake up a dead horse, even as an oncologist, as a medical professor, to wake the dead up, it's going to take some kind of uh, uh, experiments to try to, you know, stimulate those nerves and get them up. Just like Einstein did. What must we do now? If you were present, what would you be doing to try to take away insecurity? Uh, Gimba, one, one thing I'm telling you, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and his crew are disconnected from realities of our people. In the United States, when the presidential candidates come to, come to, come to debate, <laughs> people ask them, what is the price of a gallon of milk in the market? That was what Lord Bush Sr. These people are disconnected from the realities of our people. They can sit down and do all the theory. I will tell you the emergency now in this country, all across this country, from Abia to Zara, is that people are hurting, people are hungry. And it's not because of lack of food in the market.
subsidize food and give food to the people. It's not that there is no food in the you are the price of how much you buy the rice. The government should forget this theory. The primary responsibility they should face now is feeding the people. No country that is a serious country plays with hunger. You must feed people and crash down the price of food in the market. One of the ways feed people, two hundred million people. How do you do that? Well, then we have the money. How then do you do that? You give seventy-five billion. To members but the president the came out to say that no, no, that notion is wrong. Nigeria is poor. Nigeria doesn't have that kind of money. Where is the okay. money? Na okay, Nigeria doesn't have the money to buy food, but Nigeria has the money to buy to give members billion to buy cars, or to be spending billions to build brand new places for the president and his wife and his SUV. You don't have money to feed people. But you have money for all of this? No, Nigeria is not a poor country. Nigeria is a rich country, but our commonwealth is in the hands of a few. There is enough money in this country for people not to go hungry. There is enough money in this country to educate our children. We were educated. Leaders of our time invested in us. They did not invest in, in bridges or flyovers. So yes, Mr. If, if you were president, I'm, I'm sorry again. If you were president, yeah. do you think that you'll be able to sort out these issues with a dilapidated structure, dilapidated systems in a country like this? What would you do first? See, first of all, I told you there is an emergency. There is fire on the mountain. People are hungry. Feed people. All this grammar, you continue doing grammar. People are hungry. You must feed people. And it is hunger that is a major driver of insecurity in this country. There is hunger in the land and you are giving 1.3 trillion to the military to buy bomb. No military in this world can bomb away poverty, hunger, anger. So our priorities are messed up. The president gives 2 billion to each state for palliatives. Two times 36 is 72 billion. But he gave 75 billion to members of National Assembly to buy, to buy SUVs. That tells you how messed up our priorities are. Governments all across, from the federal government to the state government, they are not governing with the milk of human kindness. They are only taking care of themselves. There is enough money for us not to go hungry. There is enough money to educate our children, just like leaders of our time educated us and build hospitals and build schools. And we went into the world and competed favorably in some of the best centers in the world. So, Mr. President, it's no, not acceptable to say there's no money to feed the people. There is money. Look at your cabinet. Look at the number of STVs going all over the place. In Abuja- But he has already started that. As a matter of fact, he has reduced, he has cut off so much uh, S codes and spendings for his office, the office of the vice president, the office of the first lady. Saying that he isn't. That is nothing. That's just for show. Truly, is just for show. Been spent. Look at. He gave his son, a son-in-law. He made him the MD of federal housing. The next day, what did he do? He pumped two over 200 billion Naira into that. But is there anything wrong with that? Go Apparently, that his in-law is competent to no, handle an finish. agency like that. Let me finish. Let me, let me finish. Go and look what is the budget of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. A little over 100 billion. If President Muhammadu Buhari had given his son-in-law that position, the Southern press would be up in arms. So, Gimba, you and I are old enough to tease out uh, truth from fiction. Let's let the other guys defend the president. These are indefensible policies. Our people are, are, are dying in the midst of plenty. It's not acceptable, and we're not going to keep quiet. And that's why we're involved in this for justice.
Nigeria. The what policy? The housing policy in Nigeria. Do you think that we need to up it such that we have got mass housing? Yeah. So you are you are thinking you are Gimba, Wallahi our primary responsibility over ninety percent of Nigerians are hungry. We need food. All this housing, 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 they'll just give contractors here in Abuja to go build houses there. How many people in your villages will get such houses? Our priority is to feed the people and secure the land. We need them, but this is not what we need now. There is a national emergency that is going to implode this country. It's not building houses, but feeding people and securing the land. This should be the priorities of Mr. President, reducing the cost of government, reducing corruption. Look at the corruption, the nauseating corruption we are seeing in this government is just a carryover from, from the eight years. Let's just continue. So housing, forget housing, feed people, secure the land, reduce corruption, reduce the cost of governance, and, and uh, improve our primary schools hospitals pay people fair wage reduce reduce uh, reduce the, the, the inflation rate it was 29.923 days ago you and i now we have been pushed down to the extremely poor from the extremely poor to the extremely rich many of those got their money through the government so gimba let's talk real this country is in serious trouble and the government is not serious to address this issue. It's disconnected from realities of our people. And the people we elected to come to the National Assembly... Uh, my apologies. My apologies, Prof. I'm not sure if uh, you must have heard this narrative that the northern elites, they plunge northern Nigeria into such deep poverty that so much so that it smells because they use religion to cloud their minds and not get them to be educated. How do you respond to that That's insinuation yeah, of some quarters? That's absolute bullshit. What of Southern elite? What of Yoruba elite? So don't give me that elite nonsense. It is absolute nonsense. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria today, courtesy of the North. 62% of his votes came from the North. He did not win Lagos. He did not win his home state, Lagos. 62% of his votes are from the north, predominantly northwest. With all their problems, and you take your mind off and go somewhere else. So, you talk something else. Let's talk something serious. The government, the nation, is the, in the hands of Mr. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. He is the one who... said Emilio Kong did whatever he wanted to do to become president. Don't blame anybody. You say you can do it. Eight months now, you are not doing it. People are dying. The land is, uh, is drenched in blood. We are suffering and there is hunger in the land. No excuses. Emilio Kong, do your part. If you cannot do it, get people who can. Get help. But don't tell us anything about Lagos. Lagos is a small arena. You are now in the big arena. And so far, you're failing. I think that's a good place to, to let it rest. Uh, professor uh, Yusuf Usman is a professor of uh, uh, oncology as well as hematology and bone marrow. Thank you so much indeed for talking to us. He was also one of the executive secretary. National Health Insurance Scheme here in Nigeria. I'm hoping that uh, all that you have said is getting to the right water. Understand that uh, 
according to you, Nigeria is plunging, and it's plunging even deeper if nothing is done. And you say that uh, feeding the people, Operation Feed the People should be first. Thank you so much indeed, Prof, for Thank talking to us and to everyone who's listening in Nigeria and across the world. This is Front Row Politics. And Thank you. this thing together, you find out that what? In view of this cost, circulation is cash, the independent...